Welcome to CKLA Knowledge 6, Astronomy, Introduction to the Sun and Space. Our purpose for listening today is we will discuss Earth's atmosphere and outer space. We will make observations about the sky and listen carefully to understand the word gas. The study of outer space is astronomy. Think in your head. What is the big, hot, bright object we can see in the sky during the day? You are probably thinking the sun. Let's do it again. Think in your head. What is the big object that we can see in the sky at night and that appears to be glowing? I'm sure you are thinking of the moon. One more. Think in your head. What are the smaller twinkling lights we can see in the sky at night? That would be the stars. The sun, moon, and stars are actually in outer space. Over the next few weeks, we are going to learn more about these and other objects in space. Let's take a look. Where are we? No need to have a map on this one. We're going to use a stair step chart. Earth is in the solar system that's called the Milky Way galaxy. We live on the planet Earth. We live on the continent of North America. The country, United States of America, is a part of the continent North America. The state we live in is Pennsylvania. And the city, our city is Erie. Listen carefully to learn how the sky you see during the day or night actually has two parts. Let's learn about some objects that we can see in the sky and hear which of these objects are located in the atmosphere and which are located in outer space. Have you looked up at the sky lately? Perhaps you saw a clear blue sky or maybe there were a few puffy white clouds floating around or maybe the sky was streaked with gray clouds. Occasionally, when you look up at the sky, you can see an airplane or a bird flying by, or maybe even a red balloon someone accidentally let loose. Some days, it is fun to lie on your back in the grass and stare up at the interesting shapes of the puffy white clouds overhead. Perhaps you or someone you know has even flown in an airplane up among the clouds high above the Earth's surface. You can think of the sky in two layers. There is a big blanket or bubble of air that surrounds the Earth. This bubble covers the whole Earth all the ground and oceans and everything else on the Earth's surface, including you. This bubble of air is called the atmosphere. But the atmosphere does not tell the whole story. The second layer of sky is all outer space, which lies beyond the atmosphere, an endless expanse of stars and moons and other objects. Of course, during the day here on Earth, it is easy to forget that outer space is there. But it always is. The Earth, your home, is just one little object moving around in the middle of it all, like a speck of sand amidst all the sands in the ocean. During the day, the sun shines over the Earth shedding light on all the animals and plants that live on the Earth's surface. The sun rays, or beams of light, 
spread across the skies, which appear blue to your eyes. The sun itself is a star. It is not part of the earth or earth's sky. In fact, the sun is far, far away from earth. So far away that it would take more than three months to reach it in the fastest rocket ship. But even if you could reach the sun in a rocket ship, you would never be able to get close to it. That is because the sun, like other stars, is an enormous ball of very hot gas. That means the sun is not a solid object or a liquid. It's made up of gas, a thin substance that objects can pass right through. If they didn't burn up first, everything that gets too close to it burns up instantly. Just how enormous is the sun? Think about this. If the sun were a huge bowl and the earth were a little marble, you could stuff about one million marbles into that bowl. In other words, it would take a million earths to fill the sun. The sun is just one out of billions of stars in space. However, the sun is our star. It is the Earth's star. Without the sun, Earth would be a cold, lifeless hunk of rock. All living things on Earth that you can see every day, from the trees to the bees to the flowers and the fleas, rely on the sun in one way or another. The heat, light, and energy of the sun allow life to flourish here on earth. The rising sun signals the start of a new day. In the morning, the sun rises in the east and its rays shed light across the land. People wake up and get ready for a new day, getting dressed and eating breakfast and then traveling outside to wherever it is they go, to school, to the office, to a store, or simply out for a walk. Have you ever noticed your shadow on the ground? If the sun is behind you while you are walking down the sidewalk, then your body blocks the sun's rays and creates a shadow on the ground. Your shadow is not the only shadow in the world. Clouds cast shadows as well. So do buildings and trees. Have you ever rested under the shade of a tree on a hot summer day? If so, you were resting in the shadow cast by the trees, leaves, and branches. On a hot summer day, you can feel the warmth of the sun on your skin. And if you do not use sunscreen, then you may get a sun burn. Ouch! The sun's energy can burn your skin, and that's bad. Sunburns hurt. And if you get sunburned too often, it can cause serious damage to your skin. On the other hand, the sun's light is also good for you. When your bare skin is exposed to sunlight, your body creates vitamin D, which is one of the many vitamins your body needs in order to stay healthy and strong. At the end of each day, when the sun goes down in the west, the sky changes. It isn't blue anymore. The sky becomes black and new sights appear. Instead of clouds and birds and blue sky, you, you may see an array of shining stars. You may see something else as well. Not the sun, but another object hovering in the skies above, the moon. Over the next several days, you will learn about the sun, the moon, the stars, and you will hear all sorts of amazing and interesting facts about outer space, the place beyond the Earth's sky or atmosphere. This study of the stars and other things in outer space is called astronomy. There is so much to learn about the stars and other objects in space that you can spend the rest of your life studying it and never run out of new things to learn and discover. 
That is because astronomy is the study of everything beyond our little home that we call Earth. And if astronomers have learned anything through the years, they know that there is no end to the amount of new knowledge and surprises to be discovered in the study of the stars and outer space. Let's talk. What did you learn? Share one thing you learned during today's read aloud with a friend. Use a whisper voice. Try these sentence starters. I heard that or I learned that or this one. I now know that and share something you heard in our story today. See you back here next time.